good evening and welcome. Let's all stand to our feet together. Those who are not afflicted here this evening, it's good to see you. Page number 316 in your hymn books. Oh, come all ye faithful. We'll sing the first, second, and last verses together. All the first, let's sing. and magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Special time of the year, and we ought to always keep Christ first in Christmas. He's the reason for the season. And good to be back in God's house. Continue to pray for our pastor uh, in the bed, still recovering from uh, whatever he's got and everybody else has got, so we need to continue to pray for them. But we're here tonight, and we're going to worship him. So let's go ahead and open up in prayer and ask God to bless this time together. Father, we thank you for Another beautiful day. God, I thank you for the good rain. Thank you for your many blessings. Lord, I thank you for loving old sinners the way you do. And God, giving us the greatest gift that could be ever given in your darling son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to ever keep Christ first in Christmas. Father, I pray you'll be with us in the service tonight. Help us to honor and glorify you. And Father, we're going to thank you right now for all that's done tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, page number two in your hymn books, first and last verses. Come thou fount of every blessing, and oh to grace, how great a debtor. Daily I'm constrained to be on the first. Come thou fount of every blessing.
you tonight. I want you to look around. Don't move. Just look around. Smile and wave at everybody. Do not be touching folk tonight. We need to have this plague or whatever it is that's sweeping through Calvary Baptist Church come to an end. And, uh, yeah, hello, Brother Travis. It's good to have Brother Travis Campbell and his family uh, with us tonight. Good to have Brother Justin um, uh, Bushy. I about lost that brother. Uh, and his family uh, tonight. I'll have him come up in a little bit and share what's going on there in the prison ministry. But uh, we just need to get past all this. And we will if we're uh, careful. So don't be touching anybody. Don't be getting in anybody's face. And just wave and smile. All right. You can go ahead and be seated this evening. Uh, got some announcements. Uh, do be in prayer for all these folks that are sick. We've got a, a, a really extensive list. I'm not going to go through all that. We did that this morning. And so, but really pray for these folks that are sick and going through treatments and just whatever. Pray God will help them. Um, December the 23rd, this coming Saturday, is our Christmas concert. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet over on the board for cookies. We need uh, three dozen uh, per family, I guess, uh, if you're going to make cookies and put two of, two of them in a bag, label them what they are, and uh, they need to bring those Saturday. What time? Okay. Okay. If you're making cookies, get here a little early, and early might be 4 o'clock. You think it would be? <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, you need to get here on time. Don't come dragging in five minutes like, like our Baptist habit is, you know, before service. You know, you might be waiting in the parking lot. Um, but anyway, bring them in, carry them to the kitchen, and uh, we'll take care of those. All right, Christmas Eve, we'll be having our candlelight communion service, so keep that in mind. And then December the 27th through the 30th, our gateway winter retreat uh, for our young people, so you keep that in mind and just pray that God will do a work there. Also, the Christmas cards, uh, we still have some in the back. Uh, go by and see if your name's on those cards and uh, pick those up if you would. Uh, and then tonight, after church, Miss Shelley would like young people 18 and under to come see her in the nursery for a treat and surprise. I have no idea what that is. Miss Shelley does. So uh, if you want a treat and a surprise, you see her right back over there after service. All right. I think that's about all I've got in way of announcements. Um, like I said, it's good to have the Bushy family with us tonight. Brother, I want you to come up and share a little bit about what's going on in the prison ministry and uh, what's going on in your life. Uh, Brother Travis said everything good down at the mission board. Amen. And uh, we just continue to pray for that ministry as well. well thank you, folks. It's good to be with you tonight. Uh, we uh, decided we'd drop in on you. It's been a little while. I was trying to look back how long it's been, and I couldn't figure it out because we've been to a few Calvary Baptists. So when I look back on my calendar, they all kind of blend in. But I know it's been a good while. But we just want to come by, <clears throat> just tell everybody that, uh, number one, first and foremost, thank you for your prayers. Um, without your prayers, we couldn't be doing what we're doing. Um, safety is of the Lord, whether it be on the road, whether it be in a facility. Uh, God's been awful good to us. I know um, I was with Brother Russell the other day, last week, and I said, um, when the officers told us what had take place there the night before, I said, anybody in their right mind would walk out of here. I said, but we ain't in our right mind. <laughs> and so uh, y'all know Charlie better than I do, and uh, y'all know he ain't in his right mind, neither am I. And so uh, anyways, uh, it's, of, it's literally of the hand of the Lord that we're able to do what we're doing. And uh, so last month, I just give you a little update. Just of last month, it's been it's been a busy uh, it's been a busy year. But last month we had the opportunity to go into three different three or four different. Let me think here. Three different facilities, and no, I'm sorry, four different facilities. And the first facility we walked in, um, God just blessed tremendously. The first night, it was the smallest chapel I've ever been in. Uh, could only hold 36 men. The smallest chapel I've ever been here in North Carolina. Went in there and uh, preached first night. And we had uh, about six or eight hands get, uh, raised, say they needed salvation, and nobody moved. And I said, Lord, I said, I'm burdened. We dro I drove two and a half hours there, and I drove two and a half hours home. And the next night went back. I said, Lord, I want to see somebody saved tonight. And those six hands went up again. Guess what happened that night? All six of them came forward. All six of them got saved. I got to lead each one to the Lord. The next night, we weren't done. Had a whole new group of people. Whoever got to the sign-up sheet first is the ones that got to come out. That's just how much desire they had to come into the service. Uh, that night, got to lead four more people to the Lord. And then went to another facility down the road. Uh, first night, we were on lockdown. It was a great joy. We walked in there. Alarms were going off, and we didn't know what we were going to do. 
And I said, I guess we're going to wait here for a little while. And that's always the joy because you don't know how long that wait's going to be. And so we were sitting there waiting. About an hour later, they finally, uh, they relieved everybody and they said everything's clear. They started letting everybody come out. Yet again, men were raising their hands, but nobody was coming forward. And you could feel the oppression on that place. You could feel that spiritual oppression that was there. And so we were just praying. The, night, the second night, I had a young man come forward, and he come to me, and he said, I want to be saved. I said, praise God. Got my Bible out and led him to the Lord. And uh, the third night we were there, it was yet, yet again another wonderful week. Uh, the third night uh, we got out there, the men were finally getting reared back. They actually acted like they want to come to church. And so they were getting excited. And anyways, man come forward. He was the tallest man I've ever led to the Lord. I looked up this man. He had been seven, too. Looked up to him, and there wasn't a piece of skin on him that didn't have a tattoo on him. And I looked at him, and you know what? God sees the heart of the, an individual. He doesn't look on the outward as man does. And so I wasn't judging him by no means, but I just looked at him, and I said, sir, why'd you come forward? And he said, I come forward to get saved. I said, well, praise God. I said, let me show you how. And so he called on the Lord to save him. And so in the month of November, I got to lead 12 people to the Lord. Uh, folks, that's because of your faithful prayers. That's because of your faithful support that we can do that. And so uh, November was, was awesome. This month has been a blessing. I've got to be up there with Brother Russell quite a bit this month. And also here at Wilkesboro, been serving up there some. Uh, but this month has kind of been a whirlwind. Because if you've been keeping up with our prayer letters, you know about two years ago, the Lord began to burden our heart about going out west. And so this month has been one where we've been trying to put things together. And so I, we just announced to our church this past Wednesday night, trying to tell them of everything that's going on. But in about six weeks, we're going to have our bags packed and we're moving. And so we're going to be out in the Phoenix, Arizona area. And so we're going out there, going to go into those prisons. I've got federal, I've got state, I've got private, and I've even got county all asking me, said, um, said Brother Justin, when are you coming? We're ready for you to be in our facilities. And so I'm really excited about this brand new opportunity. Uh, large facilities, uh, but you know what? Nothing's too big for God. And so you just pray with us, if you would. Just want to give you a little update, tell you what's going on. I know it's been a little while. Uh, we sure do love y'all. We think about y'all often. And we're always trying to figure out how we can get by here. You're close to home, but it don't mean we can always get by like we'd like to. And so maybe you've got that problem, too. You want to be somewhere, but it just don't always work out. But uh, it worked out tonight, and so it's good to be here with you tonight. Hope Brother Chris gets to feeling better. Look forward to seeing him again. But, uh, folks, it's good to see you this evening. Will you continue to pray for Brother Bush and his family? All our missionaries that we support around the world, just pray that God will continue to use them as we reach out in these last days. All right, can he, uh, pray for Brother Clark be preaching for us here in just a little bit. Pray that God will use him. But uh, right now, Brother James, you've got a song for us. You've got a song? Hey, here's somebody. <laughs>
some young people stepping up and want to do something for the Lord. We need to continue to need to pray for them. Ask God to use them, strengthen them, set a hedge about them too because the devil would like nothing better than to knock them down. So we pray for them. Fellas, that was wonderful. All right, Brother Clark, you come on preach. And you're going to give us the long version or the short version? <laughs> uh, I'd say. <laughs> Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 1, please. Matthew chapter 1. I thank the Lord for the opportunity to be able to stand in this pulpit. I don't get that often an opportunity, and sometimes it confuses me because most of the time I'm preaching, I'm preaching in Spanish. And so to stand up here, it's like, ah, oh, i got to put it in a different gear now and a different language and all those things. But I thank the Lord for the opportunity. Uh, I don't like it when the pastor's sick to give me the opportunity. It's like, there's not going to be too many people here tonight, Brother Clark. Would you preach for us? <laughs> sure, preacher. <laughs> he didn't really do that, but it's funny. But anyway. Um, and it helps me not to be so nervous. So I don't know what it is. Every time I get, I have to tell my wife, I look in here, and everything was going fine until about a minute ago. And um, but anyway, the Lord's blessing in, in the Spanish church. We appreciate what the Lord's doing. We've got a really good group there, about twenty-five, thirty. That are very faithful. We actually did have our uh, missions conference there, and the people got excited about it. We did our faith promise, and it looks like the church itself, the Spanish church, has promised. 15,000 in missions for the year 2024, which allows us to, I think, do about, I think, maybe 15 missionaries altogether out of the Hispanic church. And I'm thankful for that because missions is a very important part of our lives personally as well as uh, for the church itself. And we thank the Lord that they are on board with those things and have the opportunity to do something there. Matthew chapter 1 in your Bibles, as Brother German said, do I want to do the short version, long version? Don't answer that because one of us is going to feel bad about the answer. So we just won't say it. So if you'll just stand, please. I'm just going to read a couple of verses this evening and, and share something with you. Lord placed actually in my heart this morning for the Hispanic church. And I've changed it some. Obviously, the language is different. But I've changed some other things as well. And, and I feel like this is what the Lord have us to do tonight. And I, I pray that it will be a blessing to you as well. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. The Bible says, And he shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted is God with us. Would you turn the Bibles to Isaiah 9? Isaiah 9. I need this to, to kind of complete the, the message for this evening. But it's Isaiah 9 and verse 6. It's not the verse that's referenced in Matthew 1, but it goes along with the message that I want to present to you tonight. The Bible says in Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name, it's interesting, it says not his name, but his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince 
of peace. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for all that you're going to do. We pray bless the reading of your word, but also bless the message. And help me, Lord, to present clearly what you provided for me. Lord, I know it's going to be a blessing because it is your word. And so I pray you'd help us in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. It's in the name. It's in the name. The important part, the reason why we're here, is not because of Pastor Chris Hazlip or anybody else within this church here. The reason why we're here is because of the name of Jesus. He's the important part of Christmas, not Santa Claus or anything else that's going on. It's Jesus. And as you look at the, the Christmas story, you can't help but see that it says his name shall be called Jesus. His name shall be called Emmanuel. And then you go into Isaiah 9 and you see all the other names that are part of Christ and who he is. And I think of going back, and most parents ourselves, we all give our children a name. And usually there's a reason for it. There's some crazy ones that come in there, um, but there's usually a reason for why you do what you do. I know in our family itself, Alicia Marie, our oldest, Alicia, her name is Robin's middle name. You're going to see a theme through here in just a minute, but James Nelson gets his name from the first names of both of, of my, our parents, my, parent, my father and, and Robin's father. Victoria Elizabeth, Elizabeth is Robin's mother's middle name. Eva Grace, Eva's from Robin's grandmother's name. You see Robin here a lot. <laughs> Elena Priscilla is Priscilla is Robin's mother's middle name. We're continuing that theme there. My family is not... Oh, here we go, here we go. Anna Josefina, Josef, Josephine is my mother's middle name. Got one in there. Lydia Robin, Robin is going back to her mother's name. Um, but you've got a lot of names, even within the Bible itself. They've got names, and usually there's some significance within it. And more so in the Old and New Testament, it comes along with the name, and that usually that name kind of brings a mark or a brand to the person. David himself, the word David, name David means beloved. And it says in the Bible that, G, that David was a man after God's own heart, beloved. We look at others like, like Abraham, and Abraham's name means the father of a multitude. We obviously know that because of Abraham, the whole nation of Israel, and most of the world, obviously, is because of Abraham. And we've got all these names that come in, and they've got certain meanings to it. I looked up, and I didn't really know what my name meant and all that, but I was really happy to know that it actually had a very positive part to it and all that. In its origin, it's from actually an Irish origin, and it says it exudes. That was a great word. I don't really know if I understand it. But exudes, it says strength and stability. Yeah, amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all with me on that one. But it also, the word clerk, it actually means cleric or clerk, referring to a scholar within a religious order. I thought that was kind of neat to find out. Here I am, standing in a religious place, so to speak, and, and doing what, it, it, the clerk itself is actually not a clerk, a, a little person that does things on the side. It's actually the, of, of, of a person who is educated. And in this case, it's the education of scholar within a religious order. I thought that was kind of interesting there. And even further than that, Goliath. We think of Goliath as a, there's, a, there's a man there that wouldn't be one of our friends or anything like that. He was the Philistines and the enemy of God's people. But Goliath himself means splendor. And I can imagine looking at Goliath and thinking, wow, this guy's a big guy here. And that, that even that his splendor, to see something like that, it was amazing. Somebody that was twice the size of most people of that time and is strong and a warrior, and everyone was afraid of him. And the word means, Goliath means splendor. But of all these names that we'll find in the Old Testament, all these names we'll find in the New Testament, the most that we should be interested in is the name of Jesus. If you turn in your Bibles with me to Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2. Let's see what the Bible says about the name of Jesus. And I'm sure you understand probably where we're going with this and all. But Philippians chapter 2 in verse 9. Philippians 2 verse 9. The Bible says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him. In the context, we're talking about Jesus. And given him a name which is above Every name, that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The name of Jesus is something that should be highly exalted. Unfortunately, today we don't look at it that way in many cases. It's used so often and so commonly as a curse word. 
The name of Jesus himself will begin wars. You're talking about the, the nation of Islam and all that. It will begin wars in many cases. We look at Israel itself, and we know Israel was, was attacked, unjustifiably attacked. Wickedly, people that did to it. And you've got people in the streets, although they know the, the facts of what has happened, they are against Israel and anything related to Israel. And we know that Jesus came out of Israel. And it starts wars. Just the name of Jesus would start wars. But tonight, I don't want to share anything as a negative thing. I believe tonight in Matthew 1, we can look at some things that will help us. What does the name of Jesus reveal to us that we might understand a little bit more about this man called Jesus? Number one, I want us to see the name of Jesus reveals his purpose. Let's look in verse 21 here. And thou shalt bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. The name Jesus actually means Jehovah is salvation. Jehovah is salvation. The term Jehovah itself means he that exists on his own, the self-existing one. God needs nobody. We have been created to bring honor and glory to him, but through Jesus we need salvation because of what Adam did way back in the Garden of Eden. Jehovah is salvation. Jesus, what does that help us with? His purpose. What is the purpose of Jesus? Number one, it is to give hope. To give hope. Jesus is salvation. He came to save sinners. He didn't come to condemn. Rather, he came to save. Look in your Bibles in John 3, 16 through 18. Again, verses, I'm sure, that are very known to us. But I want us to see these things that we might see, okay, what is Jesus all about? What is it? It's in the name. It's in the name. What we need to know for our lives is in the name of Jesus or in his name. John 3, 16. We know the verses there through, through, through 18. Um, I know that I'll stand up here and even though that I've memorized them, I will probably mess something up. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. As sinners, we have no hope. As sinners, we are on our way to hell. But in the name of Jesus, in salvation, the Bible says, he that calls on the name of the Lord, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, the Bible says. So in the name of Jesus, number one, in his purpose, we have hope of who he is. We have hope in that. This was the plan all along before the foundation of the world. In Adam, we lost hope. In Jesus, we have regained that hope in our lives. If you look at Ephesians chapter 2 in your Bibles, Ephesians chapter 2, we're going to be looking at a lot of different places here. I think it's important. I think it's important even mark these things down, write these things down, that you might be able to go back to them and see that hope that we have in Christ. Ephesians chapter 2 in verse 11, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. We are given that hope now. The purpose of Christ, his purpose, is revealed to us in his name as Jehovah is salvation. Not only to give us hope, but also to give us help. We need help. Jesus came to give us freedom, to, give, to free us from the condemnation of our sins. Luke 4.18 says it. I've got Lucas here. I've changed it into Spanish for you. But Luke 4.18, to redeem the lost. And in Titus 2.14 says that. So God has purpose in his name is revealed to us in giving us hope and giving us help. And the last thing here is to give us a new home as well. We have been given because of Christ a new home that we did not have before. We were condemned and on our way to hell. But in the name of Jesus, as we've called upon him and asked him to save us, we now never have a new home. You look at John 14, it talks about that, that I must go away because I'm preparing a mansion for all of my children. 
And we have that, that purpose that Jesus has given in his name and his person to give us a new home. Look at Galatians chapter 1 in your Bibles. Galatians chapter 1. One back from Ephesians. Galatians chapter 1. Verse 4. Galatians 1, 4. The Bible says here, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from the present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Look in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. The Bible said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He's given us hope. He's given us help. And he's given us a new home. And that's in the name of of Jesus. You can't do that in the name of Muhammad. You can't do that in the name of Confucius. You can't do that in any other name except the name of Jesus. So that name, Jesus, Jehovah is salvation, reveals to us the person, I'm sorry, the purpose of Jesus. The second thing I want us to see is found in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23. Matthew 1, 23. That is revealed his person to us his person to us. In 123 it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So we see the person here. His name Emmanuel, Emmanuel reveals to us his person. That word Emmanuel means what? God with us. I can't even imagine that. Here we are, small, insignificant people in the realm of all things, almost 8 billion people in this world. We're one person, and God says, I will be with you. Individually, God says, I will be with you. <coughs> that gives us, the reveals to us the person. Number one, in the miracle birth, he was born of a virgin. The miracle birth, we understand of his person, he was not born normally like the rest of us because he was the son of God. It was born differently than normal was. So we see in his person that miracle birth. Number two, we see also the miracle baby. His baby was born and he was God. Philippians chapter 2 in your Bibles. Philippians chapter 2. God in the flesh came to us. It's not just a person. It was God himself in the flesh that came to, be, to walk on this earth. Chapter 2 of Philippians, verses 5 through 8. We read 9 through 11. But it says here, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and it took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and made, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Jesus came literally in the flesh. God came through a virgin and lived in this earth, God in the flesh, God with us. Now, we've never seen him in the flesh, but God is still with us. We see the miracle birth. We see the miracle baby. But here's something super, super exciting right here. We see the miracle big brother. Now, there's a whole bunch of words I could have used, and I just, I'm trying to, you know, you, you, when you try to, you, you kind of get lassoed sometimes and restrict it because you want so badly to alliterate everything. So you've got to have, start with the B and have the middle part of the B. And you've got to finish with the B. But the miracle big brother, he will fight all my battles against the devil and the flesh. That's the big brother that we've got. Jesus is with us. He's with me. He's alongside of me. So when I have a problem, he's with me. When I need help, he's with me. When I need hope, he's with me. He's that miracle big brother. I had a big brother. He wasn't real much older. He was only 10 months older than me. But he was bigger than I was. And I knew that, buddy, I could smack somebody. If I was long enough to touch my big brother, buddy, he was going to take care of things. Everyone was afraid of my big brother. That's the truth. I hope he's listening. Um, they were. He was stocky. My big brother, he was stocky. He's, he's much stockier now than I am, but in this way, not this way. But I was glad. When he was around, buddy, I, I, man, I could do anything. I could hit anybody. I sometimes hit my brother and blamed it on somebody else, and my big brother would stand up for me against my other brother which is smaller than me. But if you look in your Bibles to John 4, 4. 1 John, I'm sorry, 1 John 4, 4. 1 John 4, 4. It says, Ye are of God, little children, have overcome them, because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. 
That big brother, that miracle big brother that we got when Jesus came, he lives in all believers, and he has promised never to leave us nor forsake us. What a comfort that is. Look in Hebrews chapter 13. Look in Hebrews chapter 13 here. Again, the purpose tonight really is, at the end of all things, to encourage us to understand as Christians, and more than that, I look at the crowd here tonight, look at each one's here, and I believe everybody here is saved tonight. I believe you all are. But we need encouragement to understand this is the season. Jesus is the reason for the season. And it's not only Christmas time, but every time of the year, all these things apply to us. When we have no hope, he is our hope. When we have no help, he is our help. When we need a home, he is the home that we need. For as this person, he is the miracle baby. He's had the miracle birth. He is that miracle big brother for us that will help us and comfort us and let us know that everything is going to be okay. Everything's going to be all right. Here in Hebrews 13, 5 through 6, the Bible says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and to be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, so that we may boldly say, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. It doesn't matter. I've got a big brother that's going to watch over me and take care of me. And so do you. Everything's okay. Everything's all right. Everything's going to be fine. Because of Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. Turn all your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. I want to finish with this last one here. Isaiah 9. In verse 6, we've read that before we got started here. Isaiah 9, 6, the Bible says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called. And again, it says his name shall be called. It doesn't say his names. So every one of these things, wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and so many other names that we find throughout the Bible. It's his name. Everything in Jesus is encompassed with all these names, so to speak. But it is his name. He is one. God with us. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Jesus. Jesus. Jehovah's salvation. But this encouraged me. The word wonderful. And I want us to look at God through his name reveals to us his purpose. He reveals to us his person. But the last thing I want to see, he reveals to us his power. This name, wonderful, doesn't mean what we think it means in many cases. Now, I know you did the popcorn preaching thing. Who preached wonderful? You did. What'd you say, brother? What's it mean? Okay? It's, you're, you're way smarter than me. Okay? But there's some other things that's in here that you need to see. This name, wonderful, means supernatural. It means amazing. It means extraordinary. And it even has the meaning of miracles wonderful it's wonderful to be a child of Christ it's wonderful to live the Christian life why because it's an extraordinary life it's an amazing life it's a supernatural life where else can you go and pray to something you can't see but you believe in and you get an answer to that prayer it's wonderful to know Jesus God with us Jehovah is salvation in our lives I don't know about you, but that makes me excited. Jesus is, if I can just focus on one thing, Jesus is the miracle worker in our lives. Some of you have come from a very, very bad and difficult background. Jesus saved you and changed your life. That's the miracle that God can do for us. Jesus is his name. He's the miracle worker for that. Boy, that's exciting if you ask me. Exodus 15 in your Bibles. What wonderful things Jesus is wonderful. He's wonderful. In Exodus chapter 15 in your Bibles, Exodus 15, in verse 11, Exodus 15, 11 says, Who is like unto thee, O Lord among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Just think of the Old Testament, all those things that God did in the Old Testament. Wow, that's the, the miracle-working God. That's Jesus for us today. He can do whatever's needed in our lives. 
Would you look in Psalm chapter 77? Psalm 77. The power. It reveals the power. The name of Jesus reveals his power to us. There's a lot of things I could say. I actually have no points here, just so you know. It's just one and done. Okay? Psalm chapter 77, verse 14. Psalm 77, 14 says, Thou art the God that doest what? Wonders. That has declared thy strength among the people. God reveals himself to us. Jesus reveals himself to us in his works. And I'm here to testify. You know, I, you, I'm sure each one of us could stand up here and just share all day what God has taken us from to start with, what God has given, get, brought us through and where God has taken us to in our lives. For me to have taken, I mean, the, the shyest person in my family, I, I do not like to stand in front of people. It is not normal. Most of the time if I do get in front, my wife says, you can say something, you can say something. My face turns red, and I feel the most uncomfortable person in that room. But the miracle worker did a miracle in my life. And not only did he put me in front of a pulpit and allow me to preach, but he sent me to another country that I didn't even know the language. And here I am ministering today to people who don't know English well, but they know Spanish well. I need someone just to preach to them in Spanish and encourage them in Spanish. This morning we had the opportunity to have what we call a convivio. That means we just get together and eat. That's a great Baptist thing. So learn that word, convivio. It's a good Baptist word in Spanish. And we just sat around and enjoyed one another in Spanish church, eating pupusas and tortas and café and muffins. <laughs> That's real Spanish, I know. But God has taken some of these. They crossed the border illegally. And they've come in this world. Brother Antonio, I don't know if he's ever told this story. He got on a train and somehow he almost lost his arm coming to America to get money. But what did he find? He found a lady from West Virginia who went to church and shared Jesus with him. And Jesus changed his life. And each one of you probably could give that same story in many cases about your own life. And I'm thankful what God has done. Psalm 78, if you look at it, it shows so many things of the miracles and the wonders that God did in the Old Testament. Jesus himself, when we look in the New Testament, did hundreds, maybe thousands of miracles. He healed the sick. He gave sight to the blind. He raised people from the dead. He fed thousands and thousands of people. He did everything that we need in our lives today for God to do for us. The miracle worker. I like the other stuff. Jesus, Jehovah's salvation. I like the part of Emmanuel, God with us. But I really like the wonderful part. Jesus is the miracle worker. And Jesus can do something in your life. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what kind of miracle you need in your life tonight for God to do for you. Maybe Christmas is not a happy time for you. I love Christmas. I enjoy it. We're going to have everyone together to get all 26 of us, and, and we got another one. 27 is not out, but it's, it's in, okay? And it's coming, coming soon in February. And we're going to have everyone together. I love us being able to get together. It's a great time. But you know what? The only reason we have that is because of Jesus. God used a house fire at nighttime, 1030 at night. Everybody was in bed. God used a major event in my life for my dad, first of all, to see there's something bigger than him in this world. And he found Jesus as his Savior. And then my mother did, and my brother did, and I did, my other brother did, and my sister did. God did a miracle in this family's life. And it's a miracle that I could come down south and go, excuse me, come from the north, and I'm a preacher does it once in a while, let's everybody know that I'm a Yankee, and come down south and met a real, true, honest to goodness southern belle, and she made the mistake of falling in love with me, or I did something, I don't know what it was. 
But it's a miracle. Everything in our lives, when it comes to something good, is a miracle from God. It's in the name. It's in the name. The name of Jesus. Brother Ronnie. Robbie. I knew I was going to get something wrong. Brother Robbie. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord for what he's done. It's a miracle. Every one of us. It's a miracle. And I thank God for that. Jesus, Jehovah's salvation. Emmanuel, God with us. Wonderful. The miracle worker. What do you need tonight that only Jesus can help you with? I'm here to tell you that it's in the name. Everything you need, it's in the name. Would you sta stand as we close? Brother Jamal. I don't know what the need is tonight. I, I, I didn't necessarily preach this message as, as something for people to come forward, but, but maybe there is a need in your life. And, and I guess that hit me as I was preparing this whole thing. That last part there, the power of God, the power in Jesus' name. You know, we talk about exorcisms, and we, we got a, a negative thing towards that. But I know that when I was in Mexico, and we knew that there were some wicked things going on in the house, we would pray in every room, everywhere we went in Mexico, every house we moved to. All my children can attest to this fact. We would pray in that room and pray in Jesus' name, claiming the blood of Jesus to cleanse that from any evil spirit. There was one time that my daughters who were upstairs there would say, Dad, we're hearing this noise outside. It's out in the courtyard there. We hear this noise, and sometimes it's really weird, and it scares us. I remembered the very next morning that that was the only place in the house that I had not prayed yet. Now, I didn't explain to them what was going on. I didn't want to. I didn't want to scare them. But in Mexico, there's demonic activity everywhere. And I remember going out there and praying in Jesus' name. Nobody was around. I didn't want them to know. And claim the blood of Jesus. And my daughters from that time forward never, ever mentioned anything going on again. I'm not saying I'm anybody. I'm saying he's everything. And Jesus can change your life. Jesus can, can take things out of your life, whatever is needed in there. And so the question is, what do you need Jesus to do for you tonight? Father, I pray you bless the invitation. Lord, I pray that you'd help us as we are so close to the, the, the holiday of Christmas, Lord, that day that we celebrate the birth of Jesus. But, Lord, it's more than the birth. Father, the name of Jesus is what helps us and encourages us and, Lord, saves us, gives us help, gives us hope, gives us a new home. Father, it's that miracle, babe, that miracle birth and that miracle big brother. Father, I thank you that Jesus is the miracle worker. I'm different than I was. I'm still becoming different than what I used to be. And I'm thankful for that. With your heads bowed, your eyes closed, maybe you just want to come and say something. Ask the Lord for something. Something in your life. You need the miracle worker tonight to help you with something in your life. Would you be willing to come down now and ask God to help you to take that situation over for you? whatever it might be. Maybe you need to do that where you are. But the altar is open now. Whatever you need, He is available. He is available. He's the one. Jehovah is salvation. He's the one. God with us. Whatever you might need, He is the miracle worker. He is the miracle worker. I don't know what's in your life. He can help you. Are you willing to come? Ask the Lord for whatever is needed. Greatest thing that ever happened to this old sinner. I know if you're saved by God's marvelous grace, he's the greatest thing that ever happened to you. You can look this way. Uh, you know, this time of the year, it's a wonderful time of the year. We, I picked with Miss Wendy about uh, all the frills and the things that we do here at uh, Christmas time. But Jesus is the very best. Amen. Well, keep him in the first and forefront of our heart and mind. Everybody be good.
Don't ever forget what Jesus did for you, where he brought you from, what kind of mess you were in. I was in a mess. He loved me so much when I was in that mess. Well, he, he's everything. I like that word, wonderful. Because this is a wonderful time of year. He's a wonderful Savior. He's a wonderful, whatever tag you want to put after that word, wonderful. It's Jesus. <laughs> we appreciate you. Appreciate Brother Clark. Appreciate the fellows singing. Appreciate the good service tonight. Good to have Brother uh, Travis with us tonight and Brother Bushy and his family. And you continue to pray for them. Pray for Brother Charles Russell. He, he's out preaching a whole lot. He's not with us much. And, you know, we're thinking about giving him a welcome pack next time he comes. But uh, we need to continue to pray for them as well. All right. Well, let's go ahead and close in prayer. Pray for the preacher. Pray God to touch him, help him get feeling better. So let's pray. Brother Travis, how about you pray for us tonight? And just thank God for Jesus. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Yes, God. Amen. All right, right before you leave, remember, wave it, folks. Don't be hugging up on each other and touching each other. And if you have cards back, go by and see if you got some cards on the table back there. 18 and younger. See, Miss Shelley, she got a prize, some kind of thing for you. All right, we'll see you on Wednesday. Stay well.